family, Pastor Darius here. I'm excited about this message, man. It is a series that we're doing called Slow Jams. We're using a teaching methodology of, methodology of Jesus. Not using anything profane, but using that which is natural to explain and to practice, uh, well, and to help people practice better spirituality um, spiritually. So we're using a natural thing to explain a spiritual thing. The series is called Slow Jams. And this lesson is on the, uh, the importance of perseverance. I want you to tap in, and as always, if it blesses your life, send it to somebody else. Take care. God bless. This is my church. This is my church. This is my people. This is my, I am home. So for the next four weeks, I'm going to be engaging in a series, and what I'm actually doing is I am, I'll be utilizing a teaching methodology of Jesus called parabolic preaching. It is preaching slash teaching through utilizing parables. Parables, and this is, each time I say this, it's almost like it traumatizes people who like grew up in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. Parables are fictitious stories Jesus told to make a spiritual point. It wasn't a real historical event. People were like, oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's like, you mean to tell me the prodigal son was it? It's a fictitious. See, you see what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, Jesus is like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to use something you can understand naturally to help you understand something that's difficult to understand spiritually. Now, this is what happens, right? Now, we see this in sports, we see this in politics, and we see it in religion. Because those are the three areas that everybody experts with no experience. So what happens is whenever you do this, there's like this spirit of Pharisee or Pharisaical kind of attitude that kind of shows up when some people are saying, you playing that secular music in church. It's like, and I understand the intent, but sometimes... But, but sometimes it's, it's, it's important just to be a little more open-minded because there are three words I want you all to be uh, familiar. You know what? So I can just do this all at once because I don't even want to have to do this more than once. Uh, let's clap our hands. Let's welcome our New Jersey family in right now. Let me, let me get everybody. New Jersey. Good to see you. Good to see you, Jersey. Uh, excited about this weekend, the Change Her Women's Conference in New Jersey. Going to be incredible. Sold out. Just, just incredible. Excited about that. Now, back to what I was saying. Everybody listen to me. There are three words Pastor wants you to understand as I walk through this series. Now, we're going to be a enthusiastic but informed people. All right? One is sacred. That is that which is exclusively for divine usage. The next is the secular, that which can be used for holy purposes, but is inherently amoral, not immoral, amoral. It just means it's not exclusive for divine use. So what's an example of a secular song? The best part of waking up, is that spiritual? Did we just sing that in praise and worship? Am I making sense? So you got in a secular car, you put on secular clothes, you came. What most people are arguing, oh, they're arguing because they don't know the difference between secular and profane. So all music that's secular is not profane. Is some music profane? Yes. And profane is irreverent, it's blasphemous, it perpetuates immorality and self-destructive behavior. But music that, sing, that, but music that conveys love, that expresses love, music that expresses love isn't always endorsing or condoning sin. You got to have enough sense to know what's the right context to do what they're talking about. Yeah. 
So we're using parabolic preaching today, you know. So I just want you to know, like, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. No leader's perfect. But we are thorough. We are research. We don't have to do gimmicks. This is not gimmicky. It is something that we believe can really, if you'll be open, God's going to speak to you in, a, in an incredible way. We can have a good time and learn at the same time. So we're going in all month. And that's the last time I'm saying that. I just wanted to make sure everybody's clear. So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter number 32. I want to read a couple of verses, verse number. And for those of you that are probably, let's see, if you're 25 and under, that little square thing that they, on the video, that little square thing is called a cassette tape. <laughs> it's like, what is that? That's a cassette. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> see, y'all don't know. See, I'm of the age where you had to listen to the radio to hear your favorite song. You couldn't just go on YouTube or on iTunes. You had to wait till the DJ call. You had to tell your friend, call the radio station and tell them to play H-Town and high five. <laughs> and when that song come on, you had to put that cassette in there, press record. If you was really gangster, you press record and just let it play and hope you got your song. Then the devil get involved and mess up that film on the cassette. You start praying. <laughs> Yeah, you had to be committed to music. <laughs> Genesis 32, verse 26 says, The man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I want to stop right there and tag a title to this text. Uh, here's the topic of today's teaching, Before I Let Go. Before I let go. In 1994, an R&B group named Blackstreet yeah. released the record called Before I Let You Go. And although this song that was released by this genius of a musical group was released for the purpose of entertainment, this song does have educational value. If you will do more than vibe to the lyrics, if you will listen to the lyrics, you will see a lesson in the lyrics. If you will look at the lyrics, with more than natural eyes, but look at the lyrics with spiritual eyes, which Shakespeare says, when you look at things with spiritual eyes, Shakespeare says you can see sermons in stones. That you can look at anything and see spiritual things. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul talks about this in Romans chapter number one when he says you can look at the creation and the creation is a revelation of the grandeur and the goodness and the greatness of your God. You can look at the sun and see it staying in place without being attached to anything and say whoever did that is great. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and so, and, and so th th this, this, this is interesting because there is a lesson in these lyrics if we are willing to listen with a spiritual ear. And here is the lesson, family. You got to catch this. There are some things we don't get when we quit. There are some blessings that don't flow because we let go. Woo! Th this, this song is actually a song that reveals and exposes us to the importance of the principle of perseverance. There are some promises that are reserved for those who persevere. 
In other words, the Bible puts it this way in Hebrews 10, 36. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Come on now. So he's saying that even though I'm in God's will, it doesn't mean I won't have to wait. And the enemy goes to work during the wait. The enemy starts planting seeds of doubt during the wait. The enemy causes us to question what we heard during the wait. The enemy uses the weight to get us to worry and to wonder about whether or not God's going to make good on his word and whether God will do what he said. And I know it's too early for me to go here, but I feel a little old school church on me. And I want somebody to be reminded of what I used to hear in the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church in Kilmichael, Mississippi. He may not come when you want it. But he is always on time. If you're wondering when is he going to show up, on time. If you're wondering when is he going to do it, on time. When is he going to make a way, on time. Because whenever he gets there, even if it's not the right time, he'll make it the right time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. You have need of patience so that after you've done the will of God, after you've done the right thing, after you've obeyed and executed, you might receive the promise. This is, this is interesting because some promises are only possessed by those who understand the principle of perseverance because perseverance is actually long faith. See, strong faith is not really strong faith. Strong faith is long faith. Because the strength of your faith is not revealed in how big you can believe. The strength of your faith is revealed in how long you can believe. It's revealed in your ability to keep on believing when it seems like believing is not working. To keep on declaring it's going to happen when it looks like it's not happening. To keep on testifying, it's on the way. When there is nothing happening that indicates to you it's coming. It's the kind of faith that doesn't wait until the manifestation to give God some celebration. It's a faith that says don't wait till the battle is over. But shout, clap, rejoice, leap, dance, write, now long faith the Bible says the testing of your faith produces patience so if the testing of my faith produces patience that means God tests my faith with time He said, okay, you say you believe me. I'm going to test that with time. Because there are some promises that are only possessed by perseverance. This is why. So this is something you and I need to know before we let go. (laughs) I'm going to say that one more time this is something you and I need to know before you let go yeah because when you let go of something you do see you also let go of something you don't see when you and I let go of something y'all not ready that's giving us a little agitation We might be letting go of something that God's going to use to give us some elevation. God Almighty, this is why, and I got to get to this sermon series. I'm going to teach y'all something called Red Flags. This is why your discernment is so essential. 
This is why your own personal relationship with God is critical. Because I can teach you principles from the pulpit and the platform. But you need discernment to know how, to, how do I apply the principle in this situation. Because sometimes you need to let go. Some people's problem is you holding on to the wrong thing. And then, come on now, sometimes God want me to let go. Sometimes the devil want me to let go. I need discernment to know what do I need to hold on to. Because if you tell me to hold on to it, come a rain or shine, sleet or snow, I'm going to be like Jacob and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. I need discernment to know. Do I let go of this? Because if you like me, you like, now there's some stuff I held on to too long. And then it's like other stuff I let go of too soon. But I want to admonish and encourage someone to embrace this reality today because our text teaches a power teaches us a powerful principle regarding this practice of perseverance. The text exposes us here to a gentleman named Jacob. And I don't have time to go through all of his uh, historical background to give you greater context on what's happening here at this point in the story. But you just need to know if you allow me, allow me to sermonically summarize this. You just need to know he's in a season and a situation where he needs a personal transformation. Okay, are you here? He's a man that needs a spiritual quantum leap. He needs a big change in a short time period. Because what God is getting ready to shift him into, he's shifting into it so quickly. If he doesn't change quick, He'll forever be trying to catch up. Did you hear what I just said? See, this is why your own discernment becomes important. Because you not only have to discern divine instruction, you also have to be able to discern urgency. I need, I need somebody to talk about. Yeah, yeah. You got to be able to discern, is this something God's giving me a little time on? Or is this something God saying, I need you not only to do it, I need you to do this now. I need you to move now and shift now. He's in a season and a situation where he needs a big change in a short time period. He don't have time to go through all of the cycles. He don't have time for a coaching package. Come on. This has got to happen fast. And this got to be big. Because he is a man who is rich in cattle and in cash, but he is poor in character. Did you hear what I just said? He is rich in cattle and in cash, but he is poor in character. And he has got to a season where he's facing a situation he can't fix with a check. I don't know. Somebody talk back to me in the ATL in New Jersey online. It, it re- like he can't write a check for this one. There are some issues he could write a check for and fix it. There are some issues he can make a phone call and fix it. But his network and his net worth can't fix this one. And Jacob is finally realizing. Are y'all here? That in order for me to fix this set of problems that I'm facing, I have to allow God to fix the problems in me. I want to know, am I preaching to a church that say I want more than inspiration? I want more than emotionalism? PD, I'm trying to go somewhere. 
I got a world to change. I got a family to raise. I got a kingdom of darkness to tear down. Don't play with me on Sunday, PD. Give me what I need to get to the next level. Am I talking to anybody? Don't don't miss it. He realizes that in order to fix these problems that I'm facing, God has to fix something in me. He realizes that this problem is not going to be fixed. It's an Esau problem. And Esau is his brother, and there's this issue of hostility that he has with his brother. He thinks his brother's about to try to take his life, and this is why he's having his meet up with his brother. He doesn't even take his wife and children with him because he's like, I don't want y'all around. I don't know what's going to happen. So Esau represents the calamity you can't correct with a check. <laughs> Are y'all going to talk to me? <laughs> I said Esau represents the calamity I can't correct with a call. It represents something that can't be fixed until God fix me. That up to this point in my life, I've been able to succeed without fixing this. I've been able to advance without fixing this. I've been able to do better than most without fixing this. And God says, no, 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 Jacob. For this one right here, I can't fix this without fixing you. And I'm actually using this to fix you. This problem is your partner. I am in divine partnership with this problem because it is the only situation that will give you a revelation of your shadow side. Come on here. Darius, what do you mean? You got to catch this. God uses some situations to show you your shadow side. Darius, what's my shadow side? Our shadow side refers to the aspect of our personality, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are harmful, but they're hidden from our conscious awareness. It's a shadow. (laughs) It's aspects of our personality. It's like you can be away and not know you're away. Oh, gosh. Our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors that are harmful, but they are hidden from our conscious awareness. They are the things about me that I can't see that are hurting me. And my spirituality doesn't exempt me from my shadow side. Y'all, oh, I got Bible. All throughout scripture, we see examples of people who did not reach their potential because they didn't manage their shadow. Because shadow sides aren't revealed in time. They're revealed in seasons. So that means it's, it can be really easy for somebody to confuse you because you can be like, I've known you for 12 years. But I hadn't seen this side of you. And so you say, they changed. They never changed. The shadow was always there. It just took a certain set of circumstances to expose that shadow side. Y'all not talking to me. This is why even when people are like in romantic relationships and they're getting ready to get engaged and go to couple, I'm never impressed with how long they knew the person. That is not an indication of the potential success of the marriage. It's not how long have you known them. It is how many seasons have you seen them in. 
You know who they are when they happy. You need to know who they are when they stress. You need to know who they are when they broke. You need to know who they are if you get sick. Will they take care of you? Y'all not talking to me. And it takes certain seasons. They didn't just become jealous of you. Jealousy was a shadow. (laughs) And your success. Abel's success brought out Cain's shadow. Abraham lied and said his wife was his sister because fear brought out his shadow. Isaac did the same thing. He followed a generational pattern and said his wife was his sister because fear brought out his shadow. Moses killed a man and buried him in the sand. See, that that shadow worked there. Instead of stopping and saying, what is it in me that allows me to kill a man? Instead of dealing with the issue, he buries the evidence. So he's discreet, but not delivered. Y'all aren't talking to me. It's his shadow side. David, shadow side. Solomon, shadow side. But it's not conscious. It's not self-aware. So the behavior is not changed. Because they don't see a change needs to be made. See, we have to see this as an expression. You can be seated as an expression of spiritual warfare. See, the enemy, the en- see, for some people, y'all have to, can I just take my time? Okay, I'm trying. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 that we need the whole armor of God so we can stand against the wiles. That means methods or strategies of the devil. The devil customizes a strategy based on your character and your calling. So the way he try to get to me ain't the way he's going to try to get to you. Did you hear what I just said? I said the way he try to get to me. Might not be the way he tried to get to you. It's customized. And for some people, his, his area of emphasis is getting them not to change behavior. They know needs to change, but don't care enough to change it. But then for other people, like you, that's not his strategy. Because he, he doesn't attack you in the area of behavior. He attacks people like you in the area of blindness. He said, because if they see it, they're going to change it. If they see it, they're going to fix it. If they, come on here, if they see it, they're going to do something about it. So she says, so what I want to do with them is I want to stop them from seeing it. As the God of this world, I want to blind their minds to the glorious light of the gospel. I want to keep them absent of self-awareness. And the only way I can do that is to deceive them into thinking they self-aware. The only way I can keep them from being self-aware is to deceive them into thinking they are self-aware. So that when God starts speaking about self-awareness, they start thinking, who else need to be in church to hear the message? 
I'm not playing this month. Y'all thought this was going to be, you thought this was going to be cute and we was about to be electric sliding. We coming for a devil this month. We getting ready to be set free this month. We going to another level this month. We are playing no games this month. So God said, I, I, I got I to create a situation to give Jacob a revelation of a shadow side. So Jacob has this meetup with his brother, and his brother, he knows his brother's shadow. His brothers can be volatile and violent. He literally left home because his brother was trying to kill him. So on his way to meet the brother, he stops and says, I got to go to sleep. And while he's asleep, the Bible said he wakes up to a man wrestling with him. <laughs> Don't miss it. A man is wrestling with him. And he assumes probably it's Esau. He's probably thinking my brother has snuck up on me and is trying to kill me in my sleep. So he's thinking it's one thing in one season. But in the middle of the tussle, he realizes I'm not wrestling with who I thought I was wrestling with. I thought this was Esau. This is God. I thought this was a breakup. This is God. Y'all are talking to me. I thought this was a pink slip. This is God. I thought this was a downturn. This is God. He realizes, wait a minute. This is no ordinary tussle. This is a tussle for transformation. So initially, he's like, get off me until he gets a revelation of who's on him. And then once he get a revelation, he gets a revelation of who's on him. He realizes it's, it's God. Now God's got to tell him, get off me. Once I find out, all I need to know is if it's God. If it's God, I'm holding on. If it's God, I'm not giving up. If it's God, I'm standing 10 toes down. If it's God, I will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. I just need to know, is it God? He said, let me go. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And God says, what's your name? He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And God said, what's your name? He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. God said, what's your name? Jacob's like, I didn't ask you for an introduction. I ask you for a blessing. And God said, I know. What's your name? Y'all missed it? He said, I am getting ready to bless you. But I'm getting ready to bless you in a way you're not quite comprehending. I'm not about to bless you by giving you something. I'm about to bless you by helping you become someone. Y'all aren't talking to me. And once you become this version of yourself, there are some things you are asking me for and begging me for that you will become the kind of person that wake up and go get it. I feel 
like preaching in here. I don't know who this is for, but go get it. Shake it off and go get it. You might be crying, but go get it. You might be tired, but go get it because God will do just what he said. I gotta leave you now. But before I go, I gotta tell you one more thing. Hold on. Change is coming. God will take care of you. I'm out of time. He said, Israel and Jacob are fighting. Israel is the new version. Jacob is the old version. And the new version and the old version are in a battle with each other. Is there anybody here that knows that the new version and the old version are in a battle for your future? But I believe I'm talking to some people that's getting ready to tell Jacob that you can go no further. You got to die here this next season of my life. Is called new, new me, new joy, new peace, new friends, new money, new opportunity, new, 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 new. I see new on you. I see new on you. here I'm done he wrestled all night he wrestled in the dark dark times he wrestled because it takes time to get Jacob under control But you got to keep wrestling. I know you're disappointed in you. I, well, I know what that feels like. To be disappointed in you. See, I, I thought I would have fixed this by now. I thought this wouldn't trigger me. Now. I thought all this cash and cattle would have fixed this. But you've got to keep wrestling. Not for something. You've got to keep wrestling to become Israel. I feel your presence, Father. You're not in a fight over it. You're in a fight over you. And you have come as far as Jacob can take you. This next chapter of your life requires Israel. 
requires a willingness to not quit. How many know fighting to become Israel is a good thing? Would you consider that well doing, doing well? So here's the scripture. Don't be weary in well doing. Here's the promise. Here's the promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. Don't be weary, worn down, and well doing. Here's the promise. For in due season, not you might, not you should, you will reap if you faint not. That's, the, that's a promise. And I know you're disappointed in you. And I know sometimes you look in the mirror and you say, I'm tired of me. But you got to fight. Because this next chapter requires Israel. Lord, it hurt me for you to show me this shadow. Lord, I was embarrassed. Lord, I was, con I was confused. I didn't know how blind I was. But I know you never show me what's wrong just to show me what's wrong. Whenever you show me something wrong, you're showing me what you're getting ready to fix. I'm getting ready to fix this. Because this next chapter of your life requires Israel. Jacob, it means conniver, trickster, manipulator, scammer. Israel means prince with God. And princes don't have to manipulate. Princes don't have to be conniving. If you're a prince, you don't have to scam. His behavior changed when his revelation of himself did. But you got to fight. Father, I pray for grace to not give up. We hear you. And we will not let go until you bless us. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. I pray this over your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on, real quick. Lift those hands and receive this real quick. Come on. Make me whatever. Come on. You want me to be. Amen. So we just thank you for that. I want to pray a benediction over you before you go. Is that all right? Father, bless us and keep us. Cause your face of favor to shine upon us. Be gracious to us. Protect us. Provide for us. And above all else, grant us peace. This is my prayer for your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week.